Welcome to the Premier Ultimate League 2024 season. Opening it up with a contest today between the Indianapolis Red hosting the Nashville Nightshade. I am Charlie Lowe. With me, Kristen Kovic, a.k.a. KK. That's a mouthful. Spit that out five times fast. Hello. And we are so excited to be here on the sticks today to talk about this fantastic contest between the Red and the Nightshade. KK, how are we feeling? Oh, gosh, I think energy is really high, and I also think both teams want to come out and show everyone their high level of skill, um, all the hard work that they've been putting in these past few weeks. So it's going to be a great game. I could not agree more. The Premier Ultimate League undergoing a couple shifts this year, kind of worth talking about. Number one, no Columbus pride. Mm-hmm. What's up with that? What's been going on? Any insights? I know that you're a player, practice player with the Red. Talk, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, Mary Turner actually was at Indy Red tryouts this past year, and I chatted with her briefly. She mentioned that they weren't really – they wanted to kind of pull back and lay down some different, deeper roots and kind of redefine their program instead of trying to push a program that wasn't really working for them. So I think they're just taking a step back, and that's great. I think you should do that if that's in your wheelhouse to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Both teams, beneficiaries of the Pride taking a season off from the Premier Ultimate League. Notable additions, Mary Turner herself joining the Nashville Nightshade team. They're going to be wearing the white and purple jerseys on our screen. Indianapolis Red, most notably, Rachel Mast, WC. 2024 women's team. Team USA. Team USA. Yeah. She's going to go represent at the highest level. International competition is nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. That, so exciting to have her joining this program. A few other additions on this team. Samantha Phillips, Kat McGuire, U24 Team USA representative last summer. We'll be excited to see all of these players cleaning up for the red this season. Another you know, worthwhile note this year. Kind of reshifting of divisions here. No more kind of Midwest Division, East Division, South Division, North Division. Just two this time. One North Division, one South Division. The Red, the Monarchs, the Strike. Kind of familiar faces in this North Division, but being joined by the Philly Surge, being joined by the D.C. Shadow, among other representatives. Meanwhile, in the South, kind of see that shuffling. Nashville down in the South. Uh, no, Nashville. Nashville in the South. I believe Nashville in the South. Somebody will point it out to us if we're wrong. Uh, they're down there with Raleigh with Austin Torch, uh, with the Atlanta Soul. Um, bigger divisions, but kind of more opportunity for in-division. Good job for just in rattling division. those off. Good thank, for you. <laughs> thank you, KK. <laughs> but it'll be exciting to see how this kind of affects the way that we approach championship weekend, getting two representatives from each division instead of just one. Yeah. Getting focused on this game today, though, we had an opportunity to speak to a couple of the coaches on the Indy Red as well as on the Nashville Nightshade. KK, you know better than anybody else. Talk to us a little bit about what Coach Jackie Lai, Coach Blake Vanderbush, uh, and Coach Pukish are trying to accomplish with the Red. A lot of the coaching energy goes into playing loose, but redefining quickly. Um, a lot of the gameplay strategy right now has been mental. So <laughs> we've been leaning into this concept of Everything um, is a plus one leading us up to, you know, a plus one, plus one leading us up to plus 50. So basically, if we do something good, that's a plus one. If we do something maybe poorly that we need to readjust, we learn something. So that's also a plus one. So the, the mental fortitude that we're building all up until this point is something very important to the coaching staff this year. Absolutely. It's, there's nothing better than going out and trying to play loose. We know that we hear teams talk about that all the time, but the ability to really commit to that, to knowing, hey, we can just let stuff roll off, and because we'll get accustomed to that feeling and we'll know how to then tighten up because it'll just be to go the opposite way is incredibly important to team success. It'll be fantastic to see the Red apply some of that this season. Yeah, it takes a lot of trust, too. A lot of trust in your teammates, a lot of trust in your coaches, and also the, the mental toughness aspect has been uh, an Indy Red cultural staple. 100%. 100%. Something our community prides itself on, and no team embodies it better than your Indianapolis Red. 
kind of shifting gears and getting over to the nightshade. Had a chance to talk to the coaching staff there. They're going to come out and believe in the abilities of their athletes. Offensively, we know they're going to come out and look to switch the field whenever possible, trying to free up some deep shots, some of those long post routes if you like American football. <laughs> but really just generate opportunities for them to go out and win with their legs, to win with their height, to win with their ability in the air. Uh, quote from the coaches, athletes win championships, and that's going to be their philosophy all game long on offense and on defense. It is a gorgeous day for Ultimate Frisbee out here. It's a cool 53 degrees, just a light wind. Wonder if we're going to see any zone today. KK. I would not be surprised if a zone was thrown from either teams to mix things up. Um, I think that we're going to probably see a variation of defensive strategies today. It doesn't seem too windy. I think a zone can be a great way to throw uh, offense off their beat for just a second and then go back to person or some sort of bracket play. 100%. And it's early on in the season. These teams are going to be taking the time to develop identities. We don't know who or what they're going to be by the end of the season. We only know that right now, you can only play the opponent that's in front of you. I'm sure we'll see a mix of uh, person looks, of uh, matchup defense, of uh, maybe a little junk, probably some zone. We know that the Indy Red, huge fans of that zone and not afraid to throw it at any time with any personnel. Everyone's really comfortable in that system. Who are you looking to watch on Indy Red? Ooh, got an insight. Practice player Kira Crook, you know, took some time with her before the game. Uh, you can see her on the sidelines in a cow suit. Uh, she Love told it. me to absolutely. She told me to look out for Laura Garrenser, a.k.a. LG. Uh, transplant from previously Austin, played for the Torch for about three or four seasons. And we see Kara Crook down there right now in the cow suit. Uh, we know that LG brings a ton of experience. You know, played in Texas all through college with Melee, played with the Austin Torch, but has recently moved north. Uh, playing with Hybrid last year, going to the finals with hybrid and an excellent contest against uh, Fort Collins Shame. Also represented at Golti Nationals just a couple weekends ago. Made it to the finals there too. Yeah. And also Claire Skittles Milton, I think, is the uh, PUL's player of the game person to watch this year as well. So keep out for Skittles Milton wearing a hat out there. Um, Skittles likes to get really crafty with her cuts, with her throws. Um, she is a lefty, so she will uh, put up some interesting lefty backhand hucks. Got a chance to watch Skittles during tryouts, and she adopted this kind of fire-off hucker mentality that I had not seen from her before. Absolutely certain that we're going to see some run and go from her today. It's going to be fantastic to watch. And we're getting a look at Kind of the first line walking out on the field. See Coach Vanderbush getting the team marshaled. I see Abby Swenson, Maya Hernandez, Shani Rosenthal. Looks like, if I had to guess, yes, could be an O-line, especially because I don't see a disc down there. For those that is an O-line, <laughs> confirmed. <that> confirmed O-line. <laughs> yes. For those of you who may be tuning in for the first time, we'll take a little bit more opportunity today to kind of cue you in on some of the things you might be seeing if this is your first chance to watch an Ultimate Frisbee contest in the Premier Ultimate League. We know that teams are going to pull to each other to kick to start points off. It's akin to a kickoff in American football. Um, the red are going to be on offense receiving. They're going to be moving right to left on your screen or if you're listening, kind of give you some of the visuals. You know, offense, pretty easy. We know they're going to go down. They're going to look to score. Whatever a team scores, we take about 70 seconds between points. Clock stops moving, so don't be upset if you're coming from soccer and trying to figure out why the clock is stopping. Most quarters end pretty notably. Teams get to play out the possession at the end of a quarter, try to complete what they're doing. If there's a turnover, the disc hits the ground. That's the end of that quarter. Does not apply, though, during the fourth quarter or during a first overtime if we get there. That's going to be a more traditional buzzer beater type, uh, type of situation. Last, you know... Clock's ticking down, three, two, one. You better put that up and pray that your team comes down with it. Any other important rule insights that we should know, KK? Yeah, we're um, also going to be looking at the hand signals. 
So hand signals are an important part of the POL, not only to help signal fouls and pick calls to people on the field, but also to people watching the game, to our viewers and to people in the benches so that people can know what's happening on the field. Because a lot of times during USAU play, there's no hand signals. So there's just talking on the field as the, you know, this is a self-officiated game. So hand signals are a great way to communicate what's happening on the field to people watching it. Producer Heath just put something into my ear. We want to shout out Nadine Rowan on Nashville for winning gold at Goldie Natty's a couple weekends ago. So shout out to Nadine. Congrats, Nadine. That's exciting. She's wearing number 25, so check her out. Looking to have a huge impact on the ultimate field rather than the ultimate field. And we have our first pull. And we are off. Frisbee fans, Premier Ultimate League action underway officially for the 2024 season. Kristen Dudley picking that disc up. Long time in the Ultimate Community member. Red immediately reversing field, working to that far sideline. And there's a turnover. Rachel Mass not quite able to come down with that one. There's some of those kind of early turns we knew to expect. Yep, early game nerves, early season nerves, and that is totally normal. And looks like we have a uh, person defense happening on Indy Red. A little bit of a flat mark there from Rosenthal. Gets what she wants. Abby Swenson recording her first Premier Ultimate League block. And That's Abby Swenson is 6'1", so we expected nothing less than a D there. Absolutely. Abby Swenson, notable deep threat, playing for Indianapolis Spectre, a select flight mixed team during the club season. And they're in the middle, marshalling the offense. Tracy Lowe, T. Lowe, number 11. Tilo's played everywhere and done just about everything as we see the huck go up for the red. Hernandez not able to come down with it. That touched both of their hands. Wow. Rosenthal not able to secure it with the left hand either. Another turnover from the red, but a huge opportunity there. The red looking to attack early. We're seeing the offense with opportunities, so that's a good sign. These teams still taking a lot of time to feel each other out. Would not be surprised if it's a little bit before we get our first score as these offenses... You can practice against whoever you want, whenever you want, but there's not really any substitute for in-game experience, KK. Another block. Rachel Mass coming up huge, getting her first block with in an Indianapolis Red uniform, and Rosenthal brings it in. There's your first score of 2024. Indy Red up 1-0 on the Nashville Nightshade. And that's how we want to start it off. Yeah. During that... Uh, most recent turn from Indy Red, you saw some switching action happening. And Rachel Mass staying in that open four side space to get that poached D. Rachel Mass playing with the Cleveland Crocs, making it to nationals for the first time in 2023. Uh, we know that she's tremendously athletic, somebody who knows how to go out and win with her legs, but. One of the things that I know that she's really, really made a name for herself with is when she's put in a defensive situation, knows that she can make that ground up, thusly letting her take opportunities to kind of sit in space like you identified there and come up with huge plays. So we're seeing our first looks at the at a defensive line from the Indy Red and an offensive line for the Nightshade. Looking at the Red, I see Captain Mac Matamore out there getting ready to launch the pull. Mary Timmons, Jalen Baumgartner, some usual suspects if you've been watching the Red for a while. And McKenna Matamore is just coming back from an injury, too, so I'm really happy to see her out there. Halen from Michigan playing with Michigan State in undergrad. Go and green. Go white. <laughs> You're not going to get a lot of those out of me, KK. <laughs> and here we go. Action starting for the Nightshade on offense. Disc moving to the middle of the field. We're immediately seeing some of that back and forth, doing their best to free up some of that lateral space and chunking out huge yards. A lot of touches for number 10, Tori Taylor. She's going to be active early and often, a huge kind of pivot piece for this Nightshade team. Excellent defense from Kelly Kirker there, though. Nothing easy coming as Grace Robinson tries to free herself up. And we have our first official call, pick called. Know this from the arms going up with fists raised out to either side. Pick just means that 
players obstructed a defender's ability to stay with the person that they are guarding. Disc usually goes back or that player has an opportunity to make up the ground lost. You can tell there's a little bit of wind out there, KK. Some of these swing throws are staying just a little bit higher. Players having to go up in the air and attack as we get a goal. Nashville Nightshade tying it up at ones. Number 27, Catherine Gilbert brings in that goal off the swing. Yeah, it looks like Grace Robinson was kind of making everything happen for their offense there. Nice swing throw. It is a little floaty, so everyone has to have their head on a swivel to take down anything that kind of that the wind pops up, which is probably going to happen today. Margie Quinn hitting that nice almost OIO throw, that OEO, as it's commonly referred to. Beautiful inside pass, kind of curve into that left side where only her player can go out and get to it. Tied up 1-1. One, one. We know this is going to be a competitive game. I feel like the team that is able to open up a two or three goal lead early will probably be pretty content to ride that out the rest of the game. We're going to take some opportunity to shout out all of our Indy Red fans traveling here from far and wide. Know that there's some hybrid representation and Michigan representation down in the audience today. We thank them for being here. We want to shout out some of our local teams too. Indianapolis Spectre, second year mixed team, made select flight in their first year. Really exciting to see them out. We have they got representation on the field today. Jalen Baumgartner, one of their captains, Abby Swenson, and uh, take some time to shout out Kaya Baker, a huge uh, emotional piece of that team, coming out and representing for the Red today in the stands. Offense going. Lauren Kitten picking the disc up. Content to take a dump. There's Garen, sir, getting active early, advancing the disc to Schloniger. Doesn't like the deep look to Rosenthal. Good defense being played, but there's the swing in the middle. Saved! Wow. Skittles Milton getting involved, digging that disc out of the dirt. Yeah, Shani bopped it to Skittles. Good hand, Skittles. All right. And then Shani able to complete the effort she put in. Gets the disc from Hernandez, and that's a goal for the Indianapolis Red. No turnover, easy clean point. We're up 2-1. So we see that dig from Skittles. Really takes her time, finds a throw that she likes, gets Hernandez, cruise into that fourth side and able to put a disc up to Rosenthal. That's the kind of quick movement I feel like we're going to see a lot from. It's lots of patience, and then boom, boom, boom. How can we combo these throws into the end zone? Yeah, that was actually a very specific thing that we worked on in practice. Our last uh, weekend practice was how do you get the disc moving so that the defense doesn't have time to set up. I don't know what the red like to refer to it as. I think of it as kind of like a cascading cut. We know that as we move from left to right kind of across the field, we're going to see boom, 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 boom until that final gut is ending kind of right at that front cone. Yeah. Cascading cut. I think you should coin that. TM, 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 yeah. TM. Property of Indianapolis <laughs> Red, Charlie Lowe, Kristen Kovic, and the Premier Ultimate League. Nice floaty pull. That gives the defense enough time to run down and really lock down defense on the first. Th That's great defense off the pull. Eli Burkhart. Let's see if we can capitalize. Absolutely. Eli Burkhart, hard trap, forced a disc to that inside area, nobody home. Red get to start their counterattack. Brianna Burris moving the disc up. First year Red player Lily Hobday getting her first touch coming in for the Red. Plays for Notre Dame this year. Notre Dame Echo trying to get to Nationals for the first time in a few That's years. That's right. Matamore pushing it up. First year Red player Riley Kuznicki. You're going to hear a lot of that this season. A lot of new faces on this team. Big swing over to Burkhart. I want to admire the defensive effort here. Lots of moving around. Good hands is the understatement of the year as the Red reel that disc in. Atkins threats. Atkins threats, puts it up. Disc is floating. We're underneath it. Red able to bring it down. Great patience on the line here. And there it is. Break. Indianapolis right up 3-1 on the Nashville Nightshade. And that was just beautiful, beautiful patience, KK. 
really, really taking their time to find the end zone, knowing how important it is to secure those. We saw lots of holsters during that deep, deep point, which is uncharacteristic from the D-line, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. Hobde taking every single beat of that 10-second stall count before finally getting Burris coming under quick little five-yard pass. I have seen so many teams mess that situation up this early in the season. That is probably the most encouraging thing that we could see out of this red squad really working that patience, really taking their time and knowing, hey, something's going to open up for us. And Bree Burris is usually a cutter, but we have Bree back in the handler space. So Bree has the understanding and the wherewithal of a cutter in those, in those spaces, in the cutter spaces as well. So she's a double threat right now. Bree Burris has been a part of these teams for about as long as we can remember playing with Indianapolis Rogue as well. Huge piece for that team. From the inception, yes. Bree's the only player in Indy Rogue that has played on road every year, I think, year eight this year. Wow. Absolutely incredible career from Bree Burris. And let's see if we can get her to championship weekend this season. Nightshade starting their new offensive possession. Lots of quick movement already. Just about 20 yards outside of the end zone. There's the deep look. And we, set, we knew they were going to try to win with their athletes, and they do it. Nightshade getting the hold back, calm possession getting a little bit closer down to three. And that was uh, number six, Micah, Micah Roberts for the score. So we, this throw, and it just hangs up. Mary Timmons yields position for just a moment, and that's all that Roberts needed, able to streak onto that disc. Timmons was going to have a hard time playing that anyway, I think, the way that it kind of hung up and continued to push out. It was out. a perfect throw. Um, Throwing a huck into the back of the end zone is very hard for a defender to get. You know, a defender can try to take away different parts of the field. Um, usually you try and take away the end zone. But if it's a perfect throw all the way back into the end zone, that's a, that's a tough one to guard. Great throw. Couple points off for the Indy Red O line. Gotta, I love those. <laughs> that opportunity to say, "Wow, mm -hmm. my legs feel great." Take I a breath. Gone on for a second. We have Abby Swenson, Lauren Kitten, Emily Schloniger, T. Lo, Skittles, Kristen Dudley, and Rachel Mass. It's a whole lot of ballers out there, KK. Let's just say that. Yeah, let's see them ball out. Tracy Lowe on the pickup, centering to Lauren Kitten. Huge advantage, but Nashville Nightshade taking away the lefty advantage from the red, running through on that disc. That was number 11. Jamie Ferry. And the Nightshade all of a sudden with an opportunity to even this game back up and put it back on serve. Number two centering the disc, Sierra Rimmer. The red offense really looking to cut off some of those angles. Not having a lot of luck are the nightshade moving the disc right to left, but it doesn't matter. They find it at the front cone. That's another goal in the first nightshade break of the game. We're tied back up at three. Elena Rubino bringing in that goal for the Nashville nightshade. Red falling victim a little bit there to some of what they took advantage of early on with the nightshade. Some of these swings and throws taking some time to hang up and then creating opportunities where these throwers like Sierra Rimmer are able to just put discs to the front cone, tons of space to run on, and put goals up. Red have an opportunity here to tighten up just a little bit. They know now that these athletes on the nightshade are going to be pressuring hard. The coach has told us as much. We're going to go out and try to win with our legs, win with our athletes. Nothing easy is going to come in as these teams continue to feel each other out. Crisp throws to space, really making sure that those cutting and throwing angles stay tight is going to be huge. I think that nightshade did a really great job executing their game plan of lateral movement. 
they had a great big swing to the middle of the field, and then they worked it up open side. They had all those give and goes into the end zone. Beautiful pull goes up. Still in just over half field, and was, as we see, Tracy Lowe and Lauren Kitten look to reignite the offense for the Red. They find Rachel Mass immediately, no defender anywhere in sight. Huge hunk goes up from Rosenthal. Swenson teeing it up. She's going to win with her legs. Get out there. Abby Swenson, that's a goal for the Indianapolis Red. Outpaces both of her defenders to reel in the hunk from Rosenthal. And that's how you come back from a break, KK. As we see the Huck sail from Rosenthal, Swenson gets it just about four yards from the back of the end zone. Nobody able to go make a play on that except for Swenson. We here at the Indy Red want to take this time to recognize Discraft as one of the sponsors of the Premier Ultimate League. The Discraft Ultra Star is the official disc of the Premier Ultimate League. Discraft, the world leader in disc sports. As we... As we get a look at a couple of the fans here cheering on your Indy Red, once again, take the time to thank you. This community is nothing without the Indianapolis Red. With fans, family, and supporters, thank you for being here. Cool, calm possession for the Red mm -hmm. after a break. These teams are going to trade punches. We know that the ability to stay calm, and as we talked about, stay loose, is going to continue to be huge for both of these teams. Looks like we have a zone. And Indy Red is putting out their zone. We have Kelly Kirker on the mark, Mary in the middle, and Bree Burris looking for anything floaty. And it looks like the wind took that one. I love Eli Burkhart staying with that disc as they rip a hug to Mary Timmons, not able to bring in that trailing edge grab with the left hand. Another opportunity for this zone to get set up for the Indy Red. You mentioned Kelly Kirker on the mark. I don't know about you. I hate Kelly Kirker on the mark. Oh, I've been hand blocked by Kelly multiple times. It's it, a rite of passage. No one plays in the Indianapolis Ultimate Community without getting hand blocked by Kelly Kirker. Come sign up, get it out of the way. It's just easier if you knock it down. High blading throw for the Nightshade as they continue to try to feel out this Indy Red zone. This will be where we really test that lateral movement goal they said they were trying to figure out. Clean toes from number 10. Tori Taylor advances the disc immediately up. No one home for the huck fake. I think we're going to see Tori Ta Taylor get more involved in this game. Knocking on the doorstep, the Nashville Nightshade. Nobody able to make it to that front cone. Another high blady swing. The Red continuing to make these throws difficult. Throw sails past the Nightshade receiver, and the Red are going to get an opportunity to go punch in a break. Risa Umeno picking the disc up for the Red. What an incredible pickup for the Red Umeno was when we got her last year. Not only does she have an absorbent amount of skill, but the energy and positivity that she brings into the team culture is unmatched. No foul call on the Huck turn there for the Red. So the Nightshades start their counterattack. Seeing a little bit more person as the Red try to pick up where they can. Looking a little bit out of sorts. Nashville got the disc moving quick and early, and they're taking advantage just 10 yards away from a goal. Fast break offense is one of the most important things I think a team can work on. The ability to go out and chunk yardage out and to take advantage of matchups that aren't ideal for the other team is huge. And we see it. Tori Taylor with the score. Tori Taylor finding that front left cone, evening things back up at four. Nightshade keeping things competitive early with the Indy Red. Indy Red still looking for some consistency on this offensive out of this offensive unit. Yeah, I think that what we kind of talked about before when you chatted with the coaches, they're um, – you know, the offense is still getting a, a feel for each other. You know, we're still at the beginning stages of the season. And with so many travel players with Indy Red, a lot of times it's just going to take a season to build that chemistry. I really like the play that we saw there, if you could call it a play. A really quick, I'm going to swing to the middle and then turn over my 
far shoulder and just go to the open space there knowing I'm going to get the disc right back. It's, it takes a lot of trust, takes a lot of chemistry to know, hey, I can just go. I'm going right back over here. Just find me because I know I've got the space already. Some of these red marks really looking to seal off angles means that it's a little tougher to stay with their person as the you know, as receivers take off. Tied at fours. Pull going up from the nightshade. Red are going to be attacking right to left if you're listening to this at home. Just over two minutes left in this first quarter. Immediate pressure. Nightshade really able to come and clamp down on the red. There's number 11 again. Jamie Ferry pressuring everything for the red. But the huck is up. Skittles finds it. Her first goal of the season. Claire Skittles Milton brings that one in. St. Louis's own. How many more times are we going to see that this season? I didn't pay super close attention, but I think that was a play call. <laughs> I think that there was probably a string called. Let's see here. We have Shani putting up an amazing, beautiful huck into the end zone to Skittles. So a lot of times on the line, people will say, okay, um, you know, we're going to call this play. We're going to put it in this person's hands and go deep. I think it's also important to take some risks early on in the game and see what works and really challenge the defense to see if they can keep up and adjust accordingly. Rosenthal's really found her early rhythm as a thrower here. We've seen a couple of these deep passes go up to Swenson, to Milton. That rhythm is going to continue to be huge for her over the course of a game. She keeps that up. The Red are going to be in really good shape, especially in terms of the deep game. And if you've never had the chance to play against her, Claire Skittles Milton, one of the best possible deep targets. Big athletic body, knows how to go up, huge in the air, one of the best verticals on this Indy Red team. You're going to be really hard pressed to go get a victory against her in the air. Nightshade, starting a new offensive point. Some of the usual suspects in the backfield, Catherine Gilbert getting the offensive marshaled. We're moving ahead to Tori Taylor, sliding grab, picks it up on that sideline. Immediate throw and go. Huge layout. Disc just out of the left hand of the Nightshade. Another turnover and opportunity for the Red to go secure another break early in this first quarter. Rather late in this first quarter. Tori Taylor is a person to watch out for on Nashville Nightshade. She was a person that we were really following. She loves to get into those open spaces, kind of like uh, Rachel Mass does on Indy Red, and just shake the defense up. Starting to get some creative defensive looks out of the nightshade. Content to let that person marking the off handler go and sit off into the lane, really forcing lots of swings and backfield mobility out of the Indy Red. Disc going back, pick called downfield. Though, Matamore gives the disc back to Burris. Nightshade player able to make the ground up. Worth noting, during stoppages, the clock does stop as well. Hobde brings it in with the far hand. Another pick call, though. Eli Burkhart maybe squeaking out some yardage that they didn't go out and earn. Yeah, the, the clock doesn't stop. Mm-hmm during uh, foul calls or pick calls, unless it's uh, the last two minutes in the fourth quarter. A correction I appreciate and one I know I'm going to need again this season. KK, thank you so much. We're all learning. It's a team effort. As we see conversation happening and a turnover, so the Nightshade will get to play this possession out. Though the clock has run out, the Nightshade will get this look at the end zone about 20 yards away from another goal, hoping to even it up going into the second quarter. So they must score here, and if the disc is dropped, then the quarter is done. So Indy Red was making sure that no one got the disc during that last point, and that's the end of the quarter. Huck goes up, Indy Red swarm. It's a turnover in the red end of the first quarter of Premier Ultimate League action, up 5-4 on the Nashville Nightshade. Thirty minutes over a cup of coffee. Queen to H5 at the park. <laughs> Thumbs up emojis, clapping emojis, confetti emojis. Loaded nachos at halftime. A spin dash for the win. Best two out of three. And the time it takes to enjoy a slice or two, you can make a difference. 
Because yeah, mentorship sounds huge, but the truth is, it takes little to be big. Indy Red is sponsored by City Yoga School of Yoga and Health. City Yoga is a locally owned and operated yoga studio downtown Indianapolis. Their programs and services enhance health, uplift hearts, deepen connection, and foster positive change. Book a class with them today at cityyoga.biz or on the MindBody app. Indianapolis Red would like to give a huge thank you to one of our local sponsors, MDMI. MDMI specializes in the design and implementation of tailored data management solutions to unlock the power of your data. MDMI's experts work closely with customers to determine how to best capture, activate, and leverage their data to solve complex problems and drive productivity, innovation, and risk management. Visit MDMI.com to learn more. Indie Red is sponsored by Everyone's Joy Photography. Everyone's Joy Photography, UND Sports Team Photographer, and Indy Red's official photography company. Doesn't matter what you need, we got you covered at any event. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, or online at everyonesjoyphotography.com. With a brand new sponsor this year, the Indy Red would like to thank Cox Roofing. As a family-owned company, Cox Roofing knows that it can be difficult to entrust your home or business in someone else's hands. This is why we have cultivated an expert team to help with any roofing, guttering, or siding needs. We are here for you from a free first inspection to final walkthrough. Call Cox Roofing to schedule today. If you are enjoying today's stream, please consider donating at IndieRed.org or by scanning the QR code. IndieRed is a 501c3 and all donations go towards player pay and travel costs. Indianapolis Red is sponsored by Fountain Law Firm PC. Indianapolis Red are brought to you by Breakmark. Breakmark is Red's official uniform provider. Check out Breakmark.com for official replicas and Red merchandise. We're back. Getting ready to start off second half action. Premier Ultimate League, Indianapolis Red hosting the Nashville Nightshade. Red early lead up 5-4. Getting ready to pull to the Nightshade. Nightshade looking to even things back up. We are on serve, but after missing a possible opportunity to tie it up at the end of the quarter, Red are going to be really looking to extend this lead here. As we see the pull go up from Baumgartner, stays low. Gets a friendly and then immediately unfriendly roll, and the Nightshade will be starting just about 15 yards. Oh, sorry, six yards off a of half field. And Indy Red is coming out in another zone. I think they noticed that it shook up the Nightshade's offense, so they're going to try it again. Really going to look to make those throws come out fast. As these throws have been sitting up more and more as the wind continues to change, the Red are going to be hunting for some of those block opportunities. Throw is past Matamore immediately all the way upfield, all alone to the Nightshade. But nothing able to follow. One of the key pieces of zone offense is how much can we stack some of these cuts and get momentum going for us. Margie Quinn almost throwing to nobody, but finds another handler back there for her. Disc is reset to the middle of the field. And maybe they just needed a little bit of a reset. Tori Taylor, we've said her name a lot. We're going to say it even more. Trying to poke holes in this front line of the Indy Red Zone. Kelly Kirker up in front of Margie Quinn. 
Throw is high, sails up. Riley Guznicki in the area gets the block. Disc falls down. Indy Red take over. An opportunity to secure a break and go up two. Risa Umeto moving to Matamore. Doesn't like what she finds. And there's another block. Grace Robinson sticks her hand in there. Gives Nightshade another opportunity to secure this hold. You hear the fire call coming from the red sideline. Disc sails up and out of bounds. Red are going to take over at that front cone. 70 to go, trying to bring this break in. What do we need from the red offense here out of this D-line? I think that we're really just looking at some hard in cuts. I've noticed that um, Nashville Nightshade is baiting a little bit. So they're kind of hanging out behind the offender until the disc goes up and then they're trying to bite into the into the open space. So we, we need more definitive, harder in cuts to get the, the offensive flow moving. Red turn it over on the huck and the Nightshades start moving the other way. Margie Quinn continue to advance the disc up to Taylor. Finds Robinson back to Quinn. Content to get some of these handler moves. Huge layout. Nashville Nightshade digging the disc up and out of the earth, bringing in the hold and tying this game back up at fives. The assist coming from Margie Quinn. Nightshade doing a great job of exercising some mental toughness. As we see the disc swung around here, Margie Quinn eventually finding it back from her backfield partner, Grace Robinson. Robinson has to get low, a little bit of an awkward roll there, but secures the goal. Ties this game back up at fives. Nightshade is showing a lot of trust in each other. They're putting up um, throws kind of into the open space, trusting that their teammate is going to run onto it, which I really love to see. And really hitting those tight windows as well. You bring up the idea of trust. One of the things really notable about this Nightshade team is that they don't have a high level of variance of club teams in areas that they hail, that they hail from. Margie Quinn and uh, Grace Robinson play together on Nashville Shine, a mixed team that's been in and out of Nationals competition the last few seasons. And they are two of, you know, by a quick count, probably about 10 players coming from that program. That level of chemistry and, you know, kind of playing with each other year round is cannot be, you know, overstated. Rachel Mast, as the Reds start their offensive attack, already across half field, puts the huck up, looking for Swenson. It'll be a question of toes, and she's got it. That's a goal. Abby Swenson keeps it in bounds. A little bit of frustration out of the nightshade defender, but Swenson. When you see Swenson streak deep, it's hard not to put it. It's so hard not to put that disc up. Yeah, Rachel Mast probably gets a little bit more height on that throw than she wants, but it doesn't matter. It's the perfect receiver. Knows that Abby's going to go make a play. You see Swenson go up with that strong right hand, bring that disc down. Like we said, it was a matter of toes the entire time. She had plenty of space to bring that disc in. And between points here, we want to take time to shout out the organization that makes this all possible. The Premier Ultimate League brings you this broadcast of Premier Ultimate League action, a 501c6 nonprofit. This league has been community funded since day one, and we are so grateful for your support. Thank you for watching the Indy Red. Thank you for watching the Nashville Nightshade, and thank you for watching Premier League. Sorry, the Premier Ultimate League. Premier League Ultimate also sounds good, but is not quite what we're looking for here. I think it's a soccer league. I don't care about soccer. <laughs> Quote me. Quote me. Get at me in the chat. Producer Heath telling us that he has tweeted that. Come for me in the comments, I dare you. Pull fielded, one of the first fielded pulls we've seen as Quinn rings, brings that in. More of these high blady swings going up from the nightshade. Still tons of that lateral movement back and forth. Trying to find some of those deep opportunities. 
Burris looked to contest that throw, but Robinson keeps her hands on it. Throw sails over, comes down, two players in the area. They avoid that nasty possible head-on collision, but it means that no one comes up with the disc and the Red get to start. Another break opportunity here. There's Cap and Mac. Disc near the middle of the field. Acknowledges the pick, though. Quick pause. Still waiting for this red kind of D-line offense to develop some consistency. I know I say still waiting, and it's game one of the season, but you've got to kind of be waiting for that and hoping it's going to develop soon, right? Yeah, I think that... The idea behind... Huge dig. Risa Omeno keeps possession alive for the Indianapolis Red. Break opportunity is still very much in play. You'll see Risa flying like that all day. Controlled layout catches. Love to see it. We get our first time out taken by the Indy Red in Professional Ultimate. You are allowed to sub in players during a timeout. Any number of players that you want. It is incredibly likely we see a full sale, meaning all seven players... Uh, trade it out here, and in fact we do, giving us a brand new O-line look. Legs are fresh. Players a little more oriented to possession ball have a chance to come in and make this scoring opportunity a little bit more likely. We're going to get another look at this layout from Risa Umeno. Saunders steps out, puts a little more height on that disc than she wants. Win carries it, and Umeno has to get huge, but that Superman layout, it's rather Superwoman layout, come on now. Uh, nothing unusual from Risa. Full extension brings that in, and she's back up. Same smile on her face as you always will see her wearing and ready to start the counterattack before she's, you know, I don't think it's fair to the players that make great plays to be taken out and not get to go put it themselves, but that's my opinion. Unfortunately, this is the smart move. <laughs> You're saying you don't want players with huge adrenaline spikes to start your, you know, march downfield? Yeah. You see it over and over again. You see someone get a great layout catch or a layout D, pick up the disc, and make a bad decision. So we like some, some fresh legs, some calm minds. I think that you are fully correct, and I'm just being cranky. But we <laughs> see one of the steadiest out there, Kristen Dudley, with the disc in her hands. That's probably about the last time we're going to call her Kristen Dudley. She prefers duds, and that's how she's known. Kitten moving the disc up to Rosenthal. Back to Duds on that far sideline. Duds and Rosenthal, a pair of players traveling to Indianapolis. Despite being community members here for a long time, they come in from Pittsburgh these days. You can find them playing with Pittsburgh Parcha during the club season. Throws too far. Rosenthal there to keep possession alive. Find Swenson. Abby getting a chance to show a little bit of her backfield game. Puts the huck up. Tracy Lowe all by themselves. Brings the goal in. Twinkle toes, some of the lessons she learned from running hurdles back in the day, and that is another goal for the Indianapolis Red and a break secured. We're up 7-5. You won't see Abby just catching them in the end zone. You'll see her also throwing them into the end zone. And look at her taking this opportunity, waits until she likes something. That flick came out smoother than room temperature butter on hot toast. <laughs> Midway through second quarter action, Indy Red get a hugely important break up 7-5 on the Nightshade. The Nightshade continuing to kind of play this game of we even it back up, we get huge plays from our athletes, then we kind of get back down a couple. As you, st you know, it's still early in the game, but as you continue to kind of trade punches like this, what goes through your head if you're an O-line player coming out knowing, hey, we're down a couple, I've got to go out and perform? You can't. Think about the end of the game. You have to stay present. You have to think about the point that you're on and win the point that you're on. Nothing else matters except for that point. That's the type of mentality that you have to have. Win this point, win this rep, win this throw and catch between yourself and your receiver. It can be difficult to stay that present at times, but the Nightshade can find that kind of zen mentality, get a little bit of a uh, Phil Jackson going. They might just come out and continue to make this game a contest. Red back in this zone. We see Mary Timmons, Kelly Kirker, and Maketa Matamore trooping back and forth in that front wall for the Red. Hobde, Umeno, and Kuznicki downfield trying to cause havoc and chaos for these national receivers. 
Big layout secured from the Nashville Nightshade. That's number 25, Nadine Rowan. Brings and you that see in. 45, Sylvia Brown kind of shredding the front wall of the zone right now. And I think that's because her lefty, she has a big lefty around flick that can just open up the whole zone to get the swing and then open to the next receiver. Sylvia Brown hailing from the Huntsville area playing with Space Force, a team that burst onto the scene a couple years ago in the club season in the club scene. Nashville, pretty much Nationals attendees since they showed up. Looks like we have a timeout call. Slow to move in the timeout. <laughs> Some confusion on the field. Probably thought there was a, a call, like a pick or a foul. But it was just a timeout. We're going to take a quick break here and get in a couple words from our sponsors. Indie Red is sponsored by City Yoga School of Yoga and Health. City Yoga is a locally owned and operated yoga studio downtown Indianapolis. Their programs and services enhance health, uplift hearts, deepen connection, and foster positive change. Book a class with them today at cityyoga.biz or on the MindBody app. Indianapolis Red would like to give a huge thank you to one of our local sponsors, MDMI. MDMI specializes in the design and implementation of tailored data management solutions to unlock the power of your data. MDMI's experts work closely with customers to determine how to best capture, activate, and leverage their data to solve complex problems and drive productivity, innovation, and risk management. Visit MDMI.com to learn more. Indie Red is sponsored by Everyone's Joy Photography. Everyone's Joy Photography, UND Sports Team Photographer, and Indie Red's official photography company. Doesn't matter what you need, we got you covered at any event. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, or online at Everyone's Joy. We're back after the timeout. Nashville Nightshade looking to put this opportunity in. Disc still in the hands of number 45, Sylvia Brown. Swinging, but the red shifting to a person defense, trying to mix up the look. Huck is launched. All kinds of players in the area, and there's a block. Riley Kuznicki smacks that one to the ground. The Red retake possession. Brianna Burris getting this break opportunity started. There's Shirley Saunders, number 20. Oh, and Burris just misses it with the right hand. Knocking on the doorstep now. Couldn't be anywhere better than five yards out. Nightshade, let's see if they can put this one in. And there's a couple names we haven't seen yet. Mia Lettery, number 24, getting the assist for the Nashville Nightshade. As we see Mia Lettery to number very 12, Megan Kramer. Yeah, and Megan Kramer and Lettery were so quick on that opportunity, wasting no time chewing up those yards as fast as they could to get across the goal line. That was an incredibly important point for the Nightshade. Going down three would have been near crushing thus far in this contest. Thank you, I'm a volunteer. I hope Brie Burris isn't kicking herself too much for dropping that pass. It's easy to say it happens up here. 100%. 100%. We'll see how she bounces back. One great thing about Indy Red actually is strategy to keep all players on one side of the field so they can be on the same side of the field. They can come off the field. They can talk to each other. They can lift each other up. So no splitting fields for Indy Red. Splitting sidelines. Tilo decided to get huge and brave and do something I wouldn't do and jump to catch that pull and bring it down instead of letting it uh, sail downfield a little bit more. Gives us a great opportunity as we're attacking from a lot closer as we see Tilo dig that disc up incredibly fast to that spot. Tilo is always shocking in how much ground she can cover as quickly as she does. Think players see Handler and think, oh, you know, 
that's not somebody that's going to go keep these passes alive. Disc is turned over just a little bit too far out of the reach of Shani Rosenthal. Great layout D from number 21. Elena Rubino. We're saying her name a lot, too. Both on offense and defense. An unfortunate doink from 23. Oh. And a little bit of confusion here. Disc was turned over, but not before a timeout was called by the Nightshade, who have now used their second timeout, trying to kind of re-marshal their line, probably get some offensive people out there. We'd already seen actually. They number call that timeout before the turnover? Yeah, as that throw was going up, you saw the coach already starting to walk onto the field. It's mm -hmm. We'll see if that warrants some discussion and kind of how quickly we're recognizing timeouts over the rest of this game, but it doesn't change the fact that the Nightshade will get a chance to sub in some O-line players. We already saw Margie Quinn, number 28, kind of crossing over. They know how important this point is. Now they can throw out the rest of their O-line staff and you know, really go out and try to even this game back up on this break opportunity. Each team gets two timeouts per half so that was the second timeout that Na Nashville has taken. So they have no more timeouts. I think Indy Red has both or one? Indy Red has one timeout yep. left. As we get on the screen, one of our officials today, Colby Parker, ultimate is generally a self-officiated sport, but that does not mean that occasionally we do not need people to come in and Make important clarifications, help rule on up-downs, in-and-outs of the end zone, in-and-outs on the field. So we thank our officials, our observers, for fulfilling that role for us. And we have Tori Taylor isolated side stack set up for Nashville Nightshade, and Indy Red did a great job shutting down that isolation of Tori. Red really doing what they can to not prevent some of these deep opportunities from going up, and the Nightshade are very content to kind of pick up what the Red are giving them. Getting some conversation, though, about closeness on the mark. Margie Quinn a little bit unhappy with the positioning of the of Laura Garrenser. Conversation on play call is supposed to be resolved within about 20 seconds. Players not able to come to a conclusion. We're sending the disc back in the hands of Tori Taylor, number 10, marked by Emily Schloniger. We see the observer there in that neon shirt, ready to keep the play moving if, the, if it's not resolved within that time frame. Stahl coming in on zero. Doesn't matter, Tori Taylor. Her throw blocked by Maya Hernandez, number 66. Ann Arbor zone. Duds re-engaging the offense. Hernandez active immediately, sliding grab to keep possession alive. And we're seeing a lot of offensive possession at players out there. Tilo reels in the huck. A beautiful I.O. lefty backhand from Skittles Milton. And that's just good, clean family fun. Skittles Milton, like we talked about, looking to establish herself as more of a throwing threat this season. We get a look at this layout block from Hernandez. Taylor frees up the look that she wants, but it doesn't matter. Hernandez doing her best to keep space between her and the defender, comes in with that hand outstretched, gets the block, about as safe as you can make that play without going directly into the player, and then generates an opportunity. Skittles Milton played for Indy Rogue this past season, and this was the look that she was looking for all season long. Get the disc in the middle of the field, look to the end zone, backhand huck. And that throw had beautiful pace on it. It gave Tilo an opportunity to slow it down, size it up, 
didn't give the defender an opportunity to run onto it. And Tilo, just a nice clean jump catch, seals the goal. Red maintain their two goal advantage and look to go to advance it to three. Pull up from Baumgartner, easily clearing midfield. And Risu Meno hustling down on the pole to make sure no first throw. Great mark from Saunders and throw just a little bit too outside from Sylvia Brown. Burris finds Matamore towards the middle of the field and the red counterattack is off and running. We see Umeno continuing to swing the field. Timmons gets way big with that left hand. Specs herself going up and bringing it down. And we've got another stoppage. Looks like a timeout. Indy Red. Both teams now having used their timeouts this half. Red going to Probably do a full sail once again. I think this is an important part of this game, especially towards the end of halves, towards the end of the game, is putting in your most trusted handlers, your most trusted O-line to score. We see Coach Jackie Lai out there repping the black and old gold of the Purdue Boilermakers, her alma mater, Several members of the Indianapolis Red Squad hail from Purdue, Lauren Kitten among them as well. Uh, and though she will not tell us to, we know that Jackie is also tensely awaiting the results of the Purdue Final Four game later today. Absolutely. <laughs> I, we can tell you folks at home that neither I nor KK care at all about how Purdue does, repping other Big Ten teams instead. Go green and white, go cream and crimson. Couldn't say it better. Thanks, Charlie. Oh, anything for you, KK. <laughs> and sure enough, we see the O-line personnel. Hernandez back out there. Duds, Abby Swenson, Rosenthal, Rachel Mast out there. Kind of a quiet game as we've settled in a little bit more, but we know that Rachel Mast is someone who is very content to kind of fill those glue spaces, go in and just get done whatever job needs doing. Rachel Mass is one of the best team defenders I've ever seen. <laughs> Um, it's not about getting that big matchup play. It's about stirring up the offense to make them do something silly. Also out there on the O-line for the red, Laura Garrence or LG, we're going to start calling her, and Tilo. Mast so subtly moves that mark on her, being chased around by Micah Roberts. Hernandez able to find Rosen fall up, field for a huge chunk, doesn't put the huck up, and... Turnover. Number Take. 82 with the D. That's Mary Turner, Columbus Pride transplants to this Nashville Nightshade team getting on the stat sheet. We're under a minute left as the Nightshade look to cut this lead back down to one headed into the second half. 45 looking to run the offense here. Mary Turner Quick is... Quick giving goes. Mary Turner is such an incredibly fierce competitor, and you see her out there trying to drive this Nashville Nightshade offense almost by herself. You can feel the willpower coming off of her all the way back up here in the booth. 45 looking to give and go once again. Let's see if Indy Red can stop that quick give and go pass. The Nightshade are getting really, really aggressive with their step outs, trying to free space up. And there it is, number 45, Sylvia Brown reels the disc in with 12 seconds remaining in the half. That's a goal for the Nightshade. They are back down just one. And the red O-line, most importantly and most notably, going to go back out there having just expended their legs without bringing in a goal. So I, I know that you're looking to score here no matter what, right? But you could play the clock because you hold possession until the clock runs out. So in a perfect world, the strategy could have been, okay, we have 10 seconds left. Let's keep it out of the end zone until the clock runs out, and then we can score. Because now Indy Red has a chance to score at the end of this quarter. You're absolutely right, and I'm sure that our coaches down there, Vanderbush and Lai, are talking the team through this can be really easy as you know people coming from other sports to ultimate to see the clock winding down and think I have to go make a play I have to go make something happen with my throws with my legs with my hands and that's just not true because seven nine is very different than seven eight coming into the second half absolutely and 
in the worst case scenario, if there's a hand that gets on one of this one of these discs before the 12 seconds are up, 8-8, eight, eight, even the worst possible. We'll see how the red get down and play this. They can eat up some of this with stall. So you see Kitten with the disc in her hands. Find Schlonegger, sure handed, the Fort Wayne truck product. The clock is at zero right now, so it's a game it's a possession ball right now. So whoever has the disc in their hand. If we score, it's a goal, end of quarter. And there's Milton, disc is up to Duds, it's floating. Wow. Duds brings it in, that's a goal, Perfect Indy Red. read by Duds. The wind just bopped it up just slightly, but Duds was ready to read that and chase it down. And that's the end of the quarter. 9-7, Indianapolis Red maintain their two goal advantage over Nashville Nightshade. As we see this replay, Schlonegger sure-handed, and you can feel the pressure from the nightshade. Milton wanting to get that pressure out of the system immediately up to Kristen Dudley. Reels in the goal with that right hand. Once again, going into halftime, Indy Red up 9-7 on the Nashville nightshade. We'll be right back with second half action in the Premier Ultimate League. Indy Red, Nashville nightshade. 30 minutes over a cup of coffee. Queen to H5 at the park. <laughs> Thumbs up emojis, clapping emojis, confetti emojis. Loaded nachos at halftime. A spin dash for the win. Best two out of three. And the time it takes to enjoy a slice or two, you can make a difference. Because yeah, mentorship sounds huge, but the truth is, it takes little to be big. Indie Red is sponsored by City Yoga School of Yoga and Health. City Yoga is a locally owned and operated yoga studio downtown Indianapolis. Their programs and services enhance health, uplift hearts, deepen connection, and foster positive change. Book a class with them today at cityyoga.biz or on the MindBody app. Indianapolis Red would like to give a huge thank you to one of our local sponsors, MDMI. MDMI specializes in the design and implementation of tailored data management solutions to unlock the power of your data. MDMI's experts work closely with customers to determine how to best capture, activate, and leverage their data to solve complex problems and drive productivity, innovation, and risk management. Visit MDMI.com to learn more. Indie Red is sponsored by Everyone's Joy Photography. Everyone's Joy Photography, UND Sports Team Photographer, and Indie Red's official photography company. Doesn't matter what you need, we got you covered at any event. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, or online at everyonesjoyphotography.com. With a brand new sponsor this year, the Indie Red would like to thank Cox Roofing. As a family-owned company, Cox Roofing knows that it can be difficult to entrust your home or business in someone else's hands. This is why we have cultivated an expert team to help with any roofing, guttering, or siding needs. We are here for you from a free first inspection to final walkthrough. Call Cox Roofing to schedule today. If you are enjoying today's stream, please consider donating at IndieRed.org or by scanning the QR code. IndieRed is a 501c3 and all donations go towards player pay and travel costs. Indianapolis Red is sponsored by Fountain Law Firm PC. Indianapolis Red are brought to you by Breakmark. Breakmark is Red's official uniform provider. Check out 
Breakmark.com for official replicas and red merchandise. Halftime here in this Premier Ultimate League contest between the Indianapolis Red hosting the Nashville Nightshade. Red currently up 9-7. Tell me something you've liked from the Red so far through this game, Kristen. I liked the multiple different defensive looks from Indy Red. They're obviously looking to get Nashville Nightshade on their heels on offense to break up their set plays. Nashville has a few set plays in their bag. We've watched a bit of film of past games. Tori Taylor, we saw it. Um, their offense do start in their side stack with Tori Taylor isolated in the middle of the field. So Indy Red is prepared for that. Absolutely. What about you? From the Indy Red, I like the players willing to go out and just do what's needed. We've seen a lot of players kind of notorious for you know, kind of one primary skill set, go out there and say, no, I'm more than comfortable, you know, taking advantage of an opportunity that I find. Whether it's Abby Swenson reeling in a couple, you know, goals off of hucks, taking the time to throw a beautiful flick huck of her own, Tilo kind of playing that same, hey, I'm happy to get out here and rip those big lefties, but, you know, find me in the back of the end zone as well. You know, we're really seeing contributions come from all sides. Uh, on the other side of the disc, Nashville Nightshade, things that I like, I like that they are very early defining player roles. We're seeing huge contributions from Grace Robinson and uh, Margie Quinn in the backfield. We're seeing Sylvia Brown get really active downfield. That's something that's going to bode well because when you get towards the end of the season and it's time to go out and win games, knowing who you're going to look to and when is huge. Yeah. I also really like um, Nightshade is uh, looks very precise and strong in their offensive cutting. I would like to see a little more tighter defense from Nightshade. I've noticed that they're poaching quite a lot, which is causing kind of a lot of picks. I understand that there's some strategy there to junk up the middle of the field and stop all the inside throws, which I guess is part of their strategy, right? You talk to their coaches at the beginning of the game and you said that their defense is to force them out. So force them deep, force them wide, force them to hit their handlers, try to keep everything out of the middle, out of their hands. And I think they're doing a good job at that. But they do look a little confused and junky at times, especially during those fast transitions. Yeah, the when the Red have found a lot of success, it's because they've kind of gone out and enforced their will in the middle of the field, saying, no, we're not going to let you dictate where we're going. And every time the Red have succeeded in that, it's, it's resulted in a goal that almost inevitably comes by, comes by virtue of what, the Nash, you know, what Nashville wants to give them, which is those deep shots. It's in, 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 continuing to attack the middle of the field, and then something deep from Shani to Abby to Skittles or from Abby and Skittles in some cases. Nightshade, I think, found a lot of success early with their high-pressure defense, and as they've gotten away from it, so has the game gone. I think it'll be really interesting to see how Nightshade adjusts their defense. It was to force them deep, was to force them out, but you can see Indy Red has capitalized on those deep cuts and deep throws, and the offense hasn't made a whole lot of mistakes putting it deep. 
They've scored high percentage throws, high percentage goals in the end zone with the deep looks. So I'd be interest, interested to see if Nightshade is going to start forcing on the inside and stopping the deep throws this time. 100%. Score again, 9-7 Indy Red over the Nashville Nightshade. As we look for teams to start sending out their second half lines. It'll be a great question of who's going to come out, who's going to enforce their will, and who's going to take control of this game in the second half in this contest. And for Kristen Kovic, I'm Charlie Lowe. We'll be right back, getting ready to start this second half. Indy Red up 9-7. We are back. Second half getting ready to kick off here. Indianapolis Red up 9-7 on the Nashville. Nightshade. Nightshade are going to be pulling. Red will be attacking on offense, moving left to right. You see some of the usual suspects out there for the Indy Red offense. Duds and Rosenthal, of course, at the helm. Nightshade. Not necessarily looking for answers, but knowing that they need to find some consistency in their offensive game and especially in how they're converting these break opportunities. A two-goal deficit is very easy to turn into four goals if you're not careful as the down team. Red obviously going to be looking to keep the cleats to the gas here and try to extend this, make the game more and more comfortable for themselves. If you're just tuning in, it's a beautiful day outside, near-perfect frisbee conditions, especially for playing on turf. 53 degrees, just a slight kind of swirling wind. Look for that to create havoc for these players as they put these well-paced swing throws up. And number 11, Jamie Ferry, getting ready to get this pull going for the Nashville Nightshade. And there's that wind immediately having an effect. That disc turns over, blades its way out of the play. Fresh disc coming in. And the red, unfortunately, because the disc landed in and rolled out, having to take it from the sideline. Tilo looking a little bit displeased about that. But nonetheless, that's where we are. Fakes the deep. Rosenthal, tremendous ability to keep her body in the way. Secures that disc from Tilo. Rachel Mass churning up yards in the middle of the field. Doesn't like the look to Swenson. Gets it a little bit later, though. And there's the throw. Secured by Rosenthal. Easy offense, easy goals. Red up 10 7 on the Nightshade. I think that's the fourth handler that has scored a goal. Going deep into the end zone. <laughs> you might be right. As we see Mast doesn't like that initial look to Swenson, saw something she didn't trust in there. Abby hits that blade, and you know you see Rachel kind of gunning for it, but Rosenthal already there comfortably receiving that disc. Is Rosenthal, I know this is a really popular term right now, is Rosenthal a true hybrid, as they like to say, or do you treat her more as a handler or a cutter? Definitely um, I would consider Rosenthal a hybrid. However, I think... Shani would consider herself a true handler. Um, we've had the pleasure of marking up against each other multiple times. I have marked her both in the cutter and handler space, and she has skied me so hard multiple times. I mean, I'm only 5'4", but she can jump so high, and it shocks me. <laughs> 
Rosenthal not afraid to use her physicality to her advantage, as we saw, especially with the box out on that disc in the center of the field. Nightshade picking up. Nobody on the mark for number 27, Catherine Gilbert. She moves the disc upfield. Who else but Tori Taylor? See a little bit of a trap mark from Skittles Milton out there on a D point. Disc goes up. It's going to be a foot race, and Taylor started with five yards. Just outside of the end zone, dumps it off, scooped up. Little uncertainly by Becca Henley, her first goal of the game in the nightshade. Get that goal back down to 10-8 to the Indy Red. It's a great look to Tori. I think that Tori carries a lot of uh, weight on her shoulders to carry this team. She's making deep cuts. She's making inside cuts. She's swirling around in the zone. She's popping. She's in the handler space. She's a hard person to stop. It's reminding me a lot of, um, you know, March Madness going on. I can't help but think of some, like, player comparisons. Like, go out. We expect you to kind of go out and do it all. Paige Beckers, Caitlin Clark, you know, Camila Cardoso type players who have to put on a huge workload and, you know, expect to do everything everything else in the meantime. Uh, Tori Taylor getting that kind of usage rate right now from the nightshade, but she looks up to the task. Doesn't look gassed, going out and getting everything done. You talked a little bit about this earlier, KK. Red take a lot of pride in kind of keeping everybody on the same sideline, so there's always a line of communication. Opposite approach here from the nightshade. Happy to split sidelines. Means that you get communication from both sides of the field. You know, there's always people to follow the action, especially as you kind of drift back and forth right to left. But I think I might tend to agree with you in terms of like, hey, everybody can talk and be together. You know, we'll see kind of how that sideline advantage may, you know, continues to play out over the course of this game. Kitten looks for the reset, who is already on the other side. But Garrens are able to advance the disc up to Mast. Another sliding grab from Hernandez, kind of a trademark at this point. Big, wide mark for number 82, Mary Turner. Mass had to go straight back to Garrenser, but then able to find it in the middle of the field. Pit call stops play for just a moment, though. I'm not really surprised we've seen a lot of pit calls. First game of the season... Teams are kind of unused to the spacing and the things that other teams want to attack. And it's completely different when you're practicing against yourself to when you finally get to play against another team. Yeah. Throw up from Mast. Kitten able to stop and get underneath it. Pressure from the Nightshade, though, make that grab a little bit more difficult. That's a turnover for the Red. And the Nightshade have 70 to go in their pursuit of evening this game out. Continuing to run kind of that horizontal stack look, but we see Hernandez kind of sharking around in the middle of the field, trying to stop any upfield throws. Finally seals in on Nadine Rowan. Huge huck goes up from the nightshade. Schlonegger underneath it, but not able to close. Almost a bobble Beautiful from number 71, throw. Swiggles. Gorgeous <laughs> throw. Yeah. There was a block, a little bit of contact, though. Player hits the dirt. I think we're just taking a second to make sure the player is okay. Yeah, Garrenser poked her. Was, you know, as the disc kind of settled back towards the middle of the field, Garrenser took an opportunity to kind of reset, poke her hand in, and knock that disc away. But the kind of situation where as players are close together, that contact, be the contact becomes a little bit more unavoidable. We know that these players playing at the highest level are trying to protect each other at all times, but it doesn't mean that we don't get shaken up sometimes. And I saw the player wave their hands as if there was no call. So I think it's going to be Indy Red Disc. 
getting a couple substitutions made out there. Emily Schloniger going off. Abby Swinson coming on for the red. Number 27, Catherine Gilbert coming on for the nightshade. Again, knowing that some of you might be tuning in for the first time, trying to make some of these clarifications where we can, during an injury, can, teams can take what's called an injury substitution, and the other team gets to match. So if one of your players is injured and has to go off and you put your substituted player back in, the other team gets to match the red using that opportunity to sub in the very offensively inclined Abby Swenson. Rachel Mast can get as big as anybody, but that throw still over her hands into the hands of the Nightshade. Counterattack so fast that we're already knocking on the door. Number 25, Nadine Rowan, taking her time, lots of patience trying to find movement for the Nightshade, but that throws too long. That was great defense from LG. Crystal clear defense, crystal clear resolution. LG goes out and get it. Rosenthal's going to have an opportunity. It was going to take everything she had and more, and the disc hits the ground. I think Shanee pulled up just at the last second. I don't know. She might have been able to get that layout grab. If she had made that, I would personally die in pursuit of getting that on SportsCenter. A worthy cause. LG on the mark here. 68 to go for the Nightshade, still trying to bring in this, what is a break opportunity for them. Foot block, Lauren Kitten sends that down. Duds picking up. Red still looking for this hold. Off of Kitten, but up to Rachel Mast. We have another stoppage here. Travel called on Rachel Mast. No argument, no disagreement. Takes her two steps and we're back in play. Little small ball from the red. Duds happy to go chunk out a couple yards at a time. Swenson frees herself up. Foul call though by the Nightshade. Doesn't like the way that Abby got free. Yeah, so this has been a long point. We have some tired legs. People may not be making the the cleanest cuts, some body contact happening, which can happen. So we see that foul call with the crossing of the wrists. And then player conversation. And the observer there and the neon green to make sure that the conversation doesn't take too long to come to a resolve. Player's supposed to take 20 seconds to resolve any conversations. We see a hand clap. Looks like we came to a resolve. Yeah. A contest. Yeah, Maddie Swiggles. Oh, another drop from Mass. These discs are staying a little bit high and difficult for her. Quick thinking from the red, though, able to stop any deep looks from going up. But they're not going to stop that one. Disc is launched. That's number 27. Catherine Gilbert gets the disc outside of the end zone off a gorgeous huck look. Looking for a reset, gets it. And a timeout. First timeout. Nashville Nightshade. Nightshade taking a timeout. They know how important this break is. They're going to try to seal this by putting out an O-line. And we've talked about it, but these swing, po these swing passes, the ability to reset the field, we know it's a focus for both of these teams. There's been some kind of mis miscommunication errors. Some of these discs not quite going where they want. They get throws, you know, feeling at times a little bit rushed by both of these programs. As we see Rachel Mast, somebody about as shorthand as it gets, not, you know, disc maybe not coming to her where she expected it to, and the bobble results in, you know, what is now a huge break opportunity for the Nightshade. Yeah, and like we're, we were talking about earlier, that is a chemistry error where the receiver is not expecting the disc to come in at the, that velocity or that angle, and that just takes practice and playing with each other. As we've said, huge amounts of chemistry for this Nightshade side. Lots of team continuity uh, between Knox Fusion, Nashville Shine, a couple Space Force players. Red hail from more programs. They come from more states, and that means that there's that chemistry piece takes a m lot longer of a time to get built up. Looks like we have an isolation 
front of the stack for Nashville Nightshade. We have front of the stack clearing and Kelly Kirker with really good pressure. Almost the run through, but makes up the ground immediately, not letting anything easy go off. That disc sails and is bobbled and then turned over. Emily that Branson is, not able to reel that in. That was all Kelly Kirker making a, a great defense, putting pressure on the receiver and then making the uh, thrower do a high stall throw. One of the unintended consequences of this is that when the Red had a chance to put a D-line in, they took it, but now D-line personnel out there needing to convert a hold or convert this break opportunity, what feels like a break opportunity. Nightshade, though, earning that turn, throw too far for Kirker, have another chance with their O-line to get this score. Risa Umeno chasing around Mia Lettery. And there's a goal. That was N a really tight window. <laughs> Snuck it in there. Nightshade score. They creep within one of the Indy Red. Only down 9-10. Indy Red have to feel frustrated about how that played out. Earned an opportunity and then just perhaps because they weren't ready necessarily for the offensive chance. Throw just too far for Kelly Kirker who. Number 24 to 72. Yeah, that's Grace Castro getting that goal for the Nightshade, getting on the board for the first time today. So you're, if you're Coach Jackie Lyde and you're down there talking to the O-line for the Red right now, what are you trying to communicate to the team, knowing how important this hold is, trying to kind of keep that you know, two goal, that one break advantage? I think you're just uh, looking at the elements. You're looking at the wind. Where are you trying to keep the disc on the high side of the field, on the low side of the field? Probably towards the Indy Red sideline right now. It kind of feels like there's a crosswind. So you want to keep the disc either in the middle of the field or towards that Indy Red sideline area. Yeah, I think so. And I think it's, you know, lots of, we don't necessarily need to go out and do anything different. Really, we just want to look for chances to improve our consistency. Make throws like that one to Rachel Mass, where we, th we know this is going to come down safe and into the player's hands. Tilo saves a high, uh, high falling throw. We're over to Skittles Milton, back to Rachel Mast. Red getting back some of that lateral movement they're looking for. Mast is just cutting up the inside, wanting to go every other, looking for a deep cut. Mm, miscommunication from Tilo and Kitten. Yeah, Kitten thought there was a strike opportunity there, and Tilo wanted the swing. Dud's able to make up a lot of the ground, but not close enough with the layout to bring that disc in. Schloniger wanted to poke her hand in there, not quite able to make up the distance. Margie Quinn advancing the disc. She's up to Ferry. Back to Quinn. Nightshade D-line offense looking crisp and clean so far. Yeah, their D-line offense is, uh, besides that throwaway, was looking to holster and try and hit 100% throws. But I think the wind probably picked that up and made it float a little bit further than what they were expecting. Jamie Ferry about as big a hitbox, so to speak, as you can ask for maybe only outsized by Swenson. It would be close looking at the two of them, but throw just too far for her. Rachel Mass playing a little give and go with Tilo. Too far. Skittles Milton not able to get there either. It looks like they were both kind of waiting for the other person to lay out and not wanting to get anybody hurt. Margie Quinn calmly picks up, gets the disc moving. She's up to Ferry in the middle of the field. Big gainer going up to Micah Roberts. Lauren Kitten chasing around Margie Quinn. A little conversation though. I think they're wondering if the disc was up or down. It looked like uh, they kind of caught it in their body and then tried to hold it in their knees to keep it from touching the ground, but it looks like it might be a turn. Quick, s Quickly settled by these teams. The Red are gonna have yet another opportunity to put this hold in. Tracy Lowe walking to pick the disc up. See a vertical stack look from the Red. Rachel Mast free immediately. But the disc going to Dudley at the front of the stack. There's Milton. 
Abby Swenson not taken off yet. There's Schloniger looking for it. Puts it up. Abby Swenson, nobody home. That's a goal. Indy Red, after some back and forth, secure the hold up 11-9 on the nightshade, and that was tremendously important, KK. Yeah, I think um, the offense was looking a little wobbly these last two points. So this point is a huge morale boost. A little tilted out there, kind of from both of these teams. But the Reds stay the course first, get this hugely important hold, kind of regain that two-point advantage. That's kind of felt like the comfort space for them. They'll need to come out with some defensive intensity, though, and not just generate blocks, not just generate you know, throwaways really start looking to convert some of these, though. As the game goes on and as the nightshade kind of stay within punching distance, I wonder how much crossover we'll start to see from some of those more defensively oriented O-line players. At practice, KK, are we seeing lots of crossover or do we get lots of kind of strict lines from the red? We didn't really see strict lines until our the second day of our last practice. <laughs> So um, there's a lot of playing around with lines right now. I mean, I think we have a pretty solid O-line that, that hasn't changed much today. And we can probably hopefully see that throughout the season. Indy Red back in that zone, trying something a little bit different after the person looks weren't generating the opportunities they wanted. Big swing goes up from the nightshade. Tori Taylor getting it on the far side of the field. We do have the zone look again from Indy Red, and you want to watch Bree Burris because Bree's going to be looking to stop and get a D on the swing. Yeah. 60 seconds left. We know that the Nightshade don't need to do anything except play possession ball. Margie Quinn chunking it up the field with Catherine Gilber. They know that they can find Tori Taylor as a release valve, but she's shattered in the middle of the field by... Risa and Maple Adkins Threets currently. There's a big shot to the middle of the field, and despite some freedom in the backfield, they keep advancing towards the middle. Margie Quinn, five yards outside of the end zone. Red transition to their person, lock it up. Bidding attempt from Tori Taylor. Two-handed grab attempt is not successful, and Umeno with 20 seconds left is going to get the red offense going. Again, Indy Red just has to hold on to the disc here. They can take as long as they want. And instead of taking as long as they want, they throw it out the sideline. Looks like we had a timeout. Oh. Was it before or after the turn? This would be the second kind of questionably timed timeout and be one per side. I think it might have been before the turn. Our because it was... And, yeah. in fact, the timeout call did come off before the turnover, so the red, a little bit into the stall count, will get to put out an offensive line. So that's a high IQ coaching call right there. Absolutely. To know your personnel on the field, to make the call during this time, to know how important this possession is, and to score at the end of this quarter. Good One, job, coaches. One hundred percent. Good job, Red coaches. <laughs> That's some big brain activity from Coach Vanderbush and company. And we see Jackie Lyon, and Coach Pukish out there talking with the team. Coach Pukish getting the D line coached up, continuing to kind of get them going. On hey, we need to go out and generate more of these. Jackie studying an O line who have, you know, not a ton of pressure. Again, they don't have to score in three seconds, but we don't want to turn this disc over and miss the opportunity, right? And you're going to be looking at Nashville Nightshade to make a play because they don't want to risk making Indy Red make a mistake here. They're going to want to play some. We'll see what they do here because they could. They've done different variations. They've done lockdown person defense. They've done junky poaching defense. So we'll see what kind of strategy they throw here to throw off Indy Red. 100%. A great opportunity here for the red O-line to kind of show their medal. They can secure this opportunity. They'll go into the fourth quarter up three. And I'm, I'm seeing a bracket from Nashville Nightshade. You have one person shading inside, one person shading deep, and it gets broken right away from Skittles. 
Immediately a little bit of a slowdown though. Swenson though, able to run on, pursued by Ferry. With the clock having officially run out, we know that this is just possession offense for the Red. Can they capitalize? Hernandez, big swing, sails over, but dug out by Duds. Advances immediately to Rosenthal on a beautiful swing pass. Look at Gerenser dance on her way over to Rosenthal. Just a little bit of a jab cut upfield. Frees herself for some backfield swings. That's textbook footwork. The Nightshader being very careful about who they're picking up, but there's the throw from Milton. Swenson wow. brings it in by the tips of her fingers. That's a goal for the Indy Red, 12-9. With the, uh, now it's becoming kind of a trademark. Cut under, look deep to the end zone. I like that she's attacking multiple angles too. It's not just straight out. So as we get replay, there's the disc advance up to Skittles who not straight out, but all the way cross field over all of the action. And Swenson, it looks almost like there's a second where that could drop, but secures it, reels that disc in. We're up 12-9, Indianapolis Red over the Nashville Nightshade. One quarter of action left, 12 minutes separating both of these teams from their first win or first loss of the season. We'll be right back with Premier Ultimate League action. Thirty minutes over a cup of coffee. Queen to H5 at the park. <laughs> Thumbs up emojis, clapping emojis, confetti emojis. Loaded nachos at halftime. A spin dash for the win. Best two out of three. And the time it takes to enjoy a slice or two, you can make a difference. Because yeah, mentorship sounds huge, but the truth is, it takes little to be big. And we're back. Fourth quarter action about to kick off. Indianapolis Red up 12-9 over the Nashville Nightshade. Nightshade unfortunately yielding a goal right at the end of the quarter to the Indy Red, able to get that three-point lead back and coming out on defense here. What are you looking for from the Nightshade here? You're down three. 12 minutes separate you from first win or first loss of the season. What are you trying to get going here? I would really like to see 
Nashville adjust because Indy Red is scoring off of those deep looks, and that was their defensive strategy. So they need to adjust in real time to stop those deep looks. Yeah, I agree with you a lot on that as we see this zone from the Indy Red. Mary Timmons, Kelly Kirker, Riley Kuznicki out there kind of chasing, trying to stop some of the bleeding upfield. Because at this point, their defense is going to win their game for them. Offense is all about keeping it steady and holding. Out of the hands of Margie Quinn, off the back of Riley Kuznicki, and Maqueta Matamore starting the red offense from the middle of the field. Lily Hobday gets hand blocked. Number 10, Tori Taylor. Who else gives the Nightshade another opportunity here? Hug goes up from Taylor. Jalen Baumgartner gets the block, but almost gives the Nightshade a second attempt, but Disc falls in the feet of Becca Henley. Risa picking up, marshalling the offense over to Mack. Swing stop there, but they have Mary Timmons in the middle of the field, and the Reds start to get things back under control. Jalen Baumgartner doing everything right now. Incredible layout, keeps the disc up. Comfortable to sit in the backfield for a second and catch her breath, but Matamore keeping her involved. Matamore catching the disc in power, but number 27 getting in the way of that huck throw. I'm liking from the red that they're taking lots of opportunities here to size up these throws and make very square, very even catches. It's a good way of kind of reestablishing, hey, we're going to play calm offense. We're going to take good shots. Another hand block from the Nightshade. It doesn't matter how calm the offense is for the Indy Red. The Nightshade are smacking everything into the floor. Margie Quinn, we see the readjustment from Gilbert as she catches the disc on the low side. Indy Red in their zone right now again. That kind of front right corner, that window, is the one that where the Nightshade are really getting a lot of kind of piercing motion out of this red zone. Red almost like they're really trying to say, hey, you can keep putting it in here, but we're going to filter you to that far side. Gilbert, heavy pressure from Kelly Kirker. Del Kelly means business sleeves are rolled up. Disc is high. It's floating. Hobday in the area. That looks like a high stall huck. I'm not sure if it was necessarily to anybody. Two players, one catch, and the Nightshade are just outside of the end zone with a very important hold opportunity here. Big fake, but the disc goes up to the middle of the field. Emily Branson trying to get something done. Gets it over to Quinn. Kick spike. It's 12-10 to the Indy Red. Nashville Nightshade. Yet another goal closer, but Red with an opportunity to get that three-goal lead back. So Indy Red here, 12-10 advantage currently. You said you wanted adjustments, and I think that we saw it from the nightshade, and it came by virtue of kind of increased number of hands on the disc. They went a little bit deeper into their seven instead of seeing kind of the same three or four players. They said, we just need contributions. And they spread the disc out super well across that line. You know, and what that does is it gives you a chance to say, okay, then as these you know, opportunities become available as these chances show up, then we know that we can turn to our Margie Quinns and just put the disc in. Like I said, their defense is going to win their game for them. So if they're going to continue to play like this and get hand blocks and play really hard defense on the mark, then we're going to have a really close game down to the wire. Incredible huck. Sorry, huck. Wow. Incredible pull. Gets the action started here. Just over eight minutes left in the fourth quarter, final quarter of this game. All pulls are hucks. Not all hucks are pulls. 
That's some square rhombus type stuff coming from my <laughs> color commentator here. What an incredible leap. Maya Hernandez says, if I don't play club, then I got legs for days. Air guitar celebration. And that's a goal, 13-10 for the Indianapolis Red. You saw Skittles directing traffic there. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, that was Shani who put it up there in the end zone. But I know I saw Skittles looking to put it deep. That's what she wanted to do. She was going, go over to that corner. And then Maya was like, well, throw it to Shani first. We got to look at Kira Crook in the cow person costume representing for the Indianapolis Red as we get a look at Rosenthal walking off after what feels almost routine at this point. Another gorgeous inflow huck from her. And shout out to Skittles, Milton, and Mary for our DOF. Department of Fun leaders who are in charge of all game themes. Today we have Jean and Cow Person, hence Cow Person on the sideline. I love it. I like it. Give me some more of it. There's no rhymes there. Pull is up. I think that we're starting to see that that left to right pull must be kind of the downwind space because the pulls are carrying a lot further going in that direction. Zone look again. Kelly Kerger trying to get her hand into every cookie jar she can find. Margie Quinn, though, about as steady as anybody on the field. She's over to Gilbert. That looks stuffed, though, by Kerker and Timmons. And they have to take the little dump off to Tori Taylor, and they look a little bit upset about it. Some of these... Swings coming tight. Maple Atkins threes pulls it away, and the Nightshade did not like that call. Foul call. See the crossing of the wrists. No. No contest, oh. though. Disc stays with Atkins threes, who's back to Risa Umeno. There's huge yardage in the middle of the field for Timmons, getting to show off some of that speed. Finds Baumgartner, but it's off of her chest and back onto the ground. Throw just a little bit too much pace on it. There's the throw. Baumgartner closing. Nightshade player all alone. Baumgartner much taller than number 72 Castro, but it doesn't matter. Castro able to secure that disc. That was an incredible swing pass. Quinn gets an extra five yard advantage off of that throw because of how it sits and she converts it into an assist. Nightshade get a goal. And they are down just one now. No, my apologies. Scoreboard had not updated. They're down to 13-11. And that's the, again, adjustments, patience, looking for these opportunities, starting to change the shape on some of these throws and where you're putting them, how you're angling them. That swing from Quinn, she had time not just to continue running onto it and kind of you know, putting distance between herself and her defender, but it let her kind of size up where the next cut was coming through, and she was so quick to put that assist in the end zone. We see our signs from our players who, have, from our audience who have switched fields to stay in the sunshine. Got a Ray is Bay sign out there. We you see, can see uh, the theme has gone into the crowd too. We have cow people in the crowd. Cow people in the crowd. Cow people. If I'm the Indy Red, I'm really happy about what I'm getting out of my defensive lines. I'm just missing that consistency in converting breaks. Something that's important to develop early season because as we play deeper into the season and we get up against teams that are, we know are going to be stingy, like DC, Philadelphia, etc., those opportunities are going to become rarer and rarer and even more important. Tilo has to cover a lot of ground to get that dump pass. Schloniger... Not able to keep that back foot down. That's a turnover. Heavy pressure from number 25, Nadine Rowan. And all of a sudden, there's an opportunity to get the game back within one for the Nightshade. Number nine, Emma Patterson, swinging that disc around. Huge throw goes off. Sliding grab from Rowan. Schloniger gets in front, stops any deep looks, but they move it to Ferry in the middle of the field. There's that battle of Goliath. Ferry being shadowed by Abby Swenson. Great 
Patterson, who started this off with an excellent pull, calls a timeout. A couple seconds into the stall count, and we're going to probably see another couple full substitutions. Thirteen ten, Indianapolis right over Nashville Nightshade during the timeout. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Indy Red is sponsored by City Yoga School of Yoga and Health. City Yoga is a locally owned and operated yoga studio downtown Indianapolis. Their programs and services enhance health, uplift hearts, deepen connection, and foster positive change. Book a class with them today at cityyoga.biz or on the MindBody app. Indianapolis Red would like to give a huge thank you to one of our local sponsors, MDMI. MDMI specializes in the design and implementation of tailored data management solutions to unlock the power of your data. MDMI's experts work closely with customers to determine how to best capture, activate, and leverage their data to solve complex problems and drive productivity, innovation, and risk management. Visit MDMI.com to learn more. Indie Red is sponsored by Everyone's Joy Photography. Everyone's Joy Photography, UND Sports Team Photographer, and Indie Red's official photography company. Doesn't matter what you need, we got you covered at any event. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, or online at everyonesjoyphotography.com. With a brand new sponsor this year, the Indie Red would like to thank Cox Roofing. As a family-owned company, Cox Roofing knows that it can be difficult to entrust your home or business in someone else's hands. This is why... All right, we're back. Action reignited. Immediately into a block from Shirley Saunders in the red. Putting a D-line out there. What a fake from Eli Burkhart. Red swinging the disc back over. That's Maple Adkins Streets with the disc on the far side off the swing from Bree Burris. Advances it to her, and it's just too far. Field position a little bit better than the last opportunity for the Nightshade, but Red got to be kicking themselves, not able to convert these. There's a big old throw up to 72, Grace Castro. Tori Taylor with the disc on the goal line now. And there it is. Catherine Gilbert. The Red had that opportunity in their hands. They were able to get an immediate turnover. And then just some of these strike throw looks are not coming down today. And that is an incredibly important goal for the Nightshade. Now down just one, a lot of pressure on the Indianapolis Red. And as we approach this next point, we're going to tune back into one of our sponsors, Discraft Ultimate. The Discraft Ultra Star is the official disc of the Premier Ultimate League. Discraft, the world leader in disc sports. And once again, the Premier Ultimate League brings you this broadcast, a 501c6 nonprofit. This league has been community funded since day one, and we are so grateful for your support. Thank you to the Premier Ultimate League. We're up just one, KK. What's going through your head right now if you're the Indy Red? How important is this hold opportunity to you? It's, uh, it's, of course, very important to keep your holds, your offensive holds. I do think right now it's a mental battle. Can you stay in the moment? Can you play your offense and not succumb to the pressure? Keep it easy throws. The throws are there. You know, it looks like we have open cuts. They're open players. We have people who can hit the windows. I think we're going to start to see kind of a tightening up of lines as well. Like you said, you know, we started to see tight lines from the red in practices just a couple practices ahead of this. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be surprised now if we see, you know, some of the younger players in terms of, you know, Premier Ultimate League experience kind of being left on the sidelines and, we, you know, getting a lot more, you know, opportunities for players who have really been in it for a long time. Duds, Rachel Mast, Maya Hernandez, Shani Rosenthal, Abby Swenson, though, rookie, still out there because it's incredibly important to have that deep outlet. And Duds! 
able to run that down. That's the veteran experience we're talking about, not freaking out and making the play in the air. Content to change directions, get there with her footwork and bring that goal in. 14-12, Indy Red secure the hold. The team looked a little scared, but Abby was sure that that was the right throw. She was already walking off the field. <laughs> That's when, confidence. I love it. When you know, you know, throwers got to throw. And Abby Swenson saying, I am not just 6'1". Check out this crisp flick, baby. You see her in duds chopping it up. Abby's like, I, you, I think you're right, KK. Abby's like, I knew that throw was good. Yeah. There's no reason for us to be afraid. <coughs> Another defensive opportunity coming up here for the Indy Red, Nashville Nightshade. Get to trot the O-line back out for a point that they're starting start to finish. We'll see if the likes of Margie Quinn, Catherine Gilbert, Tori Taylor can go out and find a smooth hold or if the Red are going to be able to continue kind of being disruptors in this space. I think it's really important for people to be disruptors nowadays is what I hear. Disc lands on the line. Ruled as landing out of bounds on the line is out in this case for Ultimate Frisbee. Disc going to the middle of the field in the hands of Catherine Gilbert, who's going to get the offense started. See, just a little bit of a poach from Matamore. It's his own look, yeah. So we have a wall. We have a wall in the front. <clears throat> Matamore is looking to get um, to try and stop the, the swings and get a D and... The wind popped that up, and yep. Lily Hobday with the D. Sailed over the head of Becca Henley, throw just a little bit too far, too high. What a layout block from Tori Taylor. Nothing else to be said about that. Kuznicki had to stop and get low, and Tori Taylor sailed in for that block. Big high-release flick sailing to the low side of the field. Almost had another two players, one catch situation, but brought down by the Nightshade. Matamore pestering on the mark in that zone look as the Red are able to reset. And as they look to get swings around this quick stoppage here, you see that some of the handlers in the backfield, Margie Quinn, Tori Taylor, etc., are almost not even looking upfield until they have the disc in a position that they like. I don't think Margie Quinn wants you know, on that reception stopped and looked upfield for anything, all back to the downfield space until she got a receiver over there to continue moving. Kelly Kirker called an injury, so we have a substitute. Bree Burris is now on. Nashville content to leave their seven out there, no substitutions. Bree Burris going to play in that kind of, uh, kind of, you know, backside of that spear tip in this diamond for the red. Red continuing to work over, try to seal some of these off. High pressure from Lily Hobday, but she's going to have to recover to her position. Disc on the low side of the field for and Robinson. And Bree Burris with the D. She's looking to go to the end zone. Let's see if she can chase it down. And that throw, Mary Timmons maybe had an opportunity to go for it, but was thought it was going to Bree. Didn't get to turn on the Jets quite soon enough, and that's a turnover for the Red. And I think you're right, since the, the wind is um, going from left to right, it's kind of a harder throw to make in this side of the field. Disc is popped up. Two nightshade players in the area. Good seal from Risa Umeno. Stops that throw from advancing the disc up of 10 yards, and we're on the goal line here. You can feel the pressure rising, and Hobde gets another block. Tori Taylor's mm -hmm. still on the ground. Looks like we're going to have some conversation. There is a uh, foul contest. So Lily's making the, the fists touching each other, and that's the signal for contesting the call. So the disc is going to go back. I love the confidence from Lily Hobday, a rookie in this league, a young player generally, still in her collegiate career, like you said earlier, at Notre Dame. Standing confidently and saying, I think that I got that. I'm not going to accept this strip call. You know, I feel correct about what I did. And I think that it is the right call. It was a little bit tough to discern from up here. It could have been a block. It could have been a strip. Sending the disc back in that case, I think, is the right thing. Kind of reminds me of that moving screen call from last night. Didn't like it. 
you know, we know that UConn's unhappy about it, but it was, you know, kind of the right call to be made. Baumgartner tries to get big, forces a little bit of intimidation, though, and the throw is dropped by Castro. Habde, continuing her kind of reign of confidence, picks up, advances to Matamore. And we have a timeout whistle. Red taking their last timeout of this game with a minute 13 left. Going to plop an O-line in there and see if they can get this lead back up to three. I think Lily was ready to take over that point. Sometimes when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. If the juice is flowing, keep pouring, you know? You can tell. If you're the nightshade and you're making substitutions here, put yourself in those coaches' mindset. Are you trotting out your standard D-line, or are you keeping your kind of, you know, these have been our players of this game kind of out there to keep the momentum going? From what it looks like, it looks like their standard D-line. And it looks like our standard O-line. I love the commitment to it. Easy question asked and answered. I think that I'm kind of a rhythm person, so I tend to like it. You know, hey, can I go put my high usage players out there? People who have kind of gotten these opportunities already through the game because we can't sub them in and out like in hockey. But I think in this case, if you can get a block early and convert it and, you know, then get to trot that D-line back out again and try to, you know, make something else happen, certainly a ton of merit to it. Red, absolutely no reason they shouldn't put the full O-line back out there. You're in control of the game. You're up to just over a minute left. Go put people out there, play some possession ball, take a shot if you want the lead instead. Kind of gives you the flexibility to do what you're looking for. I'm also thinking that there's probably a play call happening from Indy Red right now. A string. That deep look is stifled by Emma Patterson. Red forced to swing, drop back to Lauren Kitten. It did look like there was a play call for Abby to go deep, but it was broken up. Skittles advances to Swenson. Hand blocked. Calls foul a foul, call. though. So since we are in the last two minutes of the last quarter, the clock stops at uh, foul calls, play uh, pick calls as well, and the t the disc is tapped back in. And there's 46 seconds left. So the end of this quarter will – it's not a possession. You have to score before the buzzer. And the pressure is mounting. Nightshade defenders are all over the place. Oh my gosh, and Abby was there to clean up the floaty disc. I don't even have words for what happened. I thought that disc was going to be caught by Schloniger and then blocked by either of the Nightshade players. And then Abby Swenson once again saying, fine, I'll go out and get it done. I'll do it with my legs. Churns the yardage in there to bring that goal in. Red go up 15-12 with 20 seconds, 26 seconds left. And that is exactly how you want to start converting in these end-of-game situations. When the pressure is mounting, you know, we saw it from these trap marks from the nightshade. Those uh, round throws were not coming. It was lots of we're at stall 6, 7, 8, and someone opens it up in the middle of the field. Rachel Mast able to sneak off one of those around throws. And then Lauren Kitten able to you know, get the disc advanced up the field to Abby, who, you know, you know, able to keep swinging, keep swinging, and then finally we get that look. Abby Swenson coming in to save the day. Abby is a young player. She's got a lot of growth to do, and she's really having a breakout game tonight. And I think we're going to see a lot more of Abby in the next few years. It's so encouraging as an organization to see your young players, Lily Hobday and Abby Swenson among them, come out and say, I'm going to establish myself today. I'm going to be a household name before the second game of the season. And the Nightshade now with an opportunity to see what their end of game scenarios look out and play like. Looks like they're just coming out in their standard 
horizontal. It didn't necessarily look like there was a play call for anyone to go deep, which they should be looking into the end zone right now. Six seconds left. Saw a hammer fake. Discus swung to the bottom of the field. Big throw goes up. Red players in the area. And a sky ball brought down by the Nightshade. Grace Robinson ends the game on her terms. 15-13. Indy Red take home the victory. The Nightshade, though, going out celebrating. That's got to feel good. Indianapolis Red, 1-0 to start the season. Nashville Nightshade, 0-1, but both teams have to feel good about some of the things they saw today. Yeah, I think that what we talked about earlier, both teams executed on their game plans, and that's something you can be really proud of and also hone in and work on for the rest of the season. Premier Ultimate League action. First game of the season coming to an end. Your final today, Indianapolis Red 15, Nashville Nightshade 13. Red move to 1-0 on the season in their quest to win the North. For Kristen Kovic, for producer Heath, I'm Charlie Lowe, and we'll catch you next time here in Indianapolis.